the heavens. We came out of them riding on this earth of ours, and we move under them and through them every day of our life. But there are all kinds of heavens. There's the astronomer's heaven, and the rocket's heaven, and the heaven of religion, and the heaven of lovers, and also the heaven of mythology. This is the one you're looking at now, the heaven of the myth-makers of ancient Greece and Rome, who created their own gods in their own images, and also created their own story of the creation. Their creation was beautiful and powerful and majestic, and so were the gods and goddesses and mortals with whom they populated their new world. But they were also spirited and turbulent, and the gods, notwithstanding their magical powers, had all the human frailties, ambition, hate, greed, jealousy, anger, petulance, vengeance. It has been thousands of years since these myths were invented and first told and written and sung. And in that time, there have been hundreds of variations of these stories by poets and artists, both great and small. There have been fairy tale versions and modern versions and musical versions. Here is still another version. Meet our newborn hero, Master Wondermaker. He doesn't look like a type to stand up against obstacles and monsters in this first of five episodes in which he'll play all the leads. But if the ancient Assyrians could make deities that were part bull and part eagle and part man, and the Aztecs could make demons out of serpents, we've got to suppose that it's possible to make a terrific adventurer out of a boy.
In this episode, he plays Acteon, the mighty hunter of Greek mythology. A good eye, a strong arm, a steady hand, a dead pigeon. These are Actium's hounds, as ferocious a pack as ever brought a stag to bay. And this is Forest Primeval. Now, if we know Actium, this hair is a prime candidate for rabbits, too. Hmm. Can't afford to waste ammunition, not when you only have one round. Now, oh, what's this? A bull? A horn? Dragon? It's a wild boar! A crashing boar! Well done, Master. We couldn't have done better ourselves. Maybe this boar could be stuffed and mounted. The tusks would look great over my mantelpiece. <sighs> On the other hand, with boar meat getting 52 drachma pounds,
What a marvelous piece of plumbing out here in the middle of nowhere. A fountain spouting fairies. Genuine Greek fairies with wings. <laughs> And an eagle, if it is an eagle. One never can be too sure in these enchanted places. Whatever it is, it's taking a lot of flat from these fairies. It could become a bald eagle if this keeps up. Oh, no, it's not an eagle. Not with a tail like that. Why, it's a griffon. It would be hard to tell from this aspect that you are looking at a genuine goddess. But that's just what she is. Diana, the goddess of the hunt. Right off, she recognizes Action, the mighty hunter, and she assumes from his gaping that he must be a dirty young man. Hell hath no fury like a goddess who's been peaked at. And now, sir, I'm going to make a few changes around here, including you. Birds of a feather, flock together! Vegetation turn into dragons. You don't fool around with the goddess of the hunt, the daughter of Jupiter. I am in a fury and I am getting madder by the minute. I'm going to change you, Acteon, into something you'd rather not be. Winds of change, 
announcement to make. As the crescent moon is my witness, I am going to punish the mighty Acteon as a lesson to all those who sneak up uninvited to leer at undressed females of whatever species, be it goddess or mortal or amphibian fairy. Here I come, Acteon. Nothing can help you now. You trespasser, you Batinsky, you middlesome quidnunc. How dare you wet your feet in the sacred waters of Diana's tepidarium? Take this for your troubles. And troubles you will have, believe you me. look different somehow. Why, there are my faithful hands. 
waiting for me. <laughs> How can they recognize his voice? His whole identity has changed, and that includes his vocal cords. <laughs> sad story of Actio, the mighty hunter who became the hunted. Having become venison, Actian had no star or constellation named after him, but Diana is associated with a heavenly body, aside from her own, that is. She's not only goddess of the hunt, but of the moon, too. In our next story, Wondermaker appears in the role of a very talented musician named Orpheus. His specialty is the liar, and they say that when he's in good form, he can move a crocodile to tears. Here in these pleasant groves, Orpheus has just been married to Eurydice. All through the night, they celebrated with their friends in good Greek fashion, and now they're going off to live happily ever after, or some reasonable approximation of that. For a trained musician, he certainly is careless with that instrument. this, a burning bush? <laughs> a pretty sneaky way to introduce a serpent. 
And this one is up to no good because it has come from the lower world, better known as Hades, and is reputed to have an enormous appetite. It's no fun to lose a bride and a liar at the same moment, so you can understand why a sensitive musician would feel badly. Only the leaves were witnesses, and maybe this one knows something that Orpheus doesn't, like where the serpent took Eurydice when she disappeared. By now, he's beginning to realize that his bride has been whisked off to the underworld. At least, the leaf seems to be guiding him in that direction. If I had a home, it would be with you. Life would be so warm and love so true. Summer forever is all we'd see if there were a home for me. the clouds riding on the wind we laugh out loud for me the dreams your memory brings wishing now that I had Now, since the guiding leaf has left Orpheus without so much as a by your leave, <laughs> he'll have to find his own way. And as you can see, it's pretty confusing. Especially when you come to a fork in the road and there's no sign, nothing but a big rock in the middle. But this rock seems to be evolving. By the sweat of Hercules, it's none other than Cerberus, the two-headed dog. Maybe they, or it, can point the way to Hades.
Suddenly water. Water everywhere. The general direction when you're going to hell is down, even into the briny deep. And the traveler waits, sounding every mind for an answer. For anything kind, for anyone singing new lullabies. And the briny deep seems to evaporate very quickly in this region. Wondering star time, star time, star time. Wondering star time. Children imprisoned in a bird cage? No doubt a punishment for evil deeds on Earth. Or perhaps for having stolen eggs from a parrot's nest. Maybe Orpheus can spring them from limbo. Look into their eyes, never hide your own. For the children are always alone. And always their hearts are more than they see. Reach across the night. Those who dare to try have the power to fly in the sky and travel together higher than high. Wondering star child, star child, star child. Wondering star child, star child, star child. Wondering Eureka! A room full of ice cream, candy, cupcakes, tutti frutti, and banana royals. Why, hell can't be such a bad place after all. Sunday. It's the snake again. Ah, the godfather. Pluto himself. Orpheus is looking for his bride, but it'll take some very special pleading to spring her from hell. So what does Orpheus have to offer? His lyre? So strum it.
tears? Crying? Can Pluto have a heart? is the stairway that will lead you back to Earth. in my crystal tear. Do not look back! I'm warning you. Don't shake it, you fool. You're upset. Now see what you've done. No, no, no. Don't go back. Don't you remember your instructions? says our star couldn't play tragedy. There is nothing in the heavens to remind us of the lovers, but the music of Orpheus lingers in the hearts of all mankind. Our hero takes on a new role. This time he will play the part of one of the gods. And here he comes now. Now this may look like a comet, but it's not. It's the god who holds the Olympus speed record. And we hardly need mention his name. It's Mercury, the winged god. And he has just come in time to see the wind-up of a festival in which lovely handmaidens bring gifts to lay at the feet of the statue of the great Athena. Now here, coming up in the rear, are three sisters. Percy, she's the blonde, Aglorus, and Pandrosus. And note that Aglorus has kept right on, but Percy stops to pick her up. And now there is nothing that can move the heart of a god as much as a true act of kindness. But he's also smitten for other reasons. In fact, if we read him right, it's love at first sight. And who can blame him? She's a vision of delight in white, naturally. It's not just gold-plated, that is solid. Aglora suspects that her sister is trying to show her up with such a fancy gift, but all she has to offer is a small banana and a couple of apples stolen from a neighbor's tree. I've got an idea. I'll just wait till everyone leaves. 
Those eyes do look kind of spooky. Oh, that's just an optical illusion. Later that evening, Sorry, Fleet, but this house is off limits. Only us girls live here. But I come bearing a rose for the girl of my dreams up there. Would you take this to her from me? Well, um, what's it worth to you? How about five gold gablon keys? Okay, it's a deal. What a fool. As you know, a goddess doesn't stand still for an insult, even if she's a statue made of marble. She's on her way to punish Aglorus with the help of the goddess of envy, who has plenty to be envious about, since she looks like a fright. Under the rules of these ancient stories, Athena can assign cases like this to such evil deities as envy. Now, because the goddess Envy, who is mixing this brew, finished last in the myth-horrible contest, Athena, by the same rules of Olympus, may not even look at her. Athena will have to give instructions from the wing, so to speak, while standing outside the entrance to Envy's laboratory. Uh, she tells Envy to be a good, bad witch and to go to the bedside of a glorious right away and give that girl a stiff dose of a jealousy venom for which there is no known antidote.
You now have a pact with the devil, dearie. And I'm gonna seal it with a kiss. Come here. Envy is in your heart now, and believe me, it's a lot worse than heart pain. <laughs> Have yourself a terrible nightmare, dearie. <coughs> What was that? Oh, adorable sister, just call me if you need me. What goes on in the mind's eye can be just as envy-making as what one sees in the eye's eye. Observe that our hero is a gentleman. He could have zoomed in through the bedroom window, but he chose the front door. It seems that a Glorus has ideas of her own when it comes to our winged god. Mercury to receive stolen goods. You will pay for your treachery by the power of my magic wand. Out of my way, evil wench. Model, 
If you have nothing but envy in your heart, you're bound to crack up sooner or later. Wondermaker assumes the role of Perseus. Perseus is apparently in no hurry to get anywhere, although we happen to know that he's bound for the palace of a no-goodnik king named Polydectes. Now, this Polydectes has a crush on Perseus's mother, but he doesn't want the boy around to get in the way, so he's figured out a scheme to get rid of Perseus, a search-and-destroy mission to find Medusa. The only trouble is, Medusa is so fierce that if anyone even looks at her, he will turn to stone. Indeed, that's just what has happened more than once to fellows a lot bigger and tougher than Perseus. <laughs> it's no joking matter to be stoned like that. All right, lad, take this sword, compliments of the house. It's very sharp and can cut through a neck like a stalk of celery. Yes, you. Go north by northeast. Pretty good mountain climbing for a kid. This is at least a 45 degree slope, and he's not even wearing crampons. Oh, are you dreamers or always in danger wherever you are? It can get very hot in Greece in the summer. Just how an old man with one crutch, trembling from palsy, ever made it to the top of this mountain is just one of the wonders our man Perseus will encounter before the day's over. better known as Mercury. He took the form of that old man to test Perseus. Let's streamline your hair. Rev up your shoes. Now you can be just as aerodynamic as I am. Born only 
And an old lady in this country. This is none other than Athena, daughter of the great Zeus himself. Perseus, if you have any hope of finding Medusa, you must not look directly at her, or you'll be turned to stone. Also, you'll need a shield. Take mine. To find Medusa, you must seek the three witches with one eye between them. Is that clear? things having to pop that eye in and out. Not that there's much to see around here, but still... I'm going to sneak up and snatch that eye and hold it for ransom until they give me directions.
Their eye has disappeared and they can't even look for it. You can't blame them for being upset. How would you feel if you had five missing eyes and a boy came along and snatched the only one you had left? In exchange for the ransom eye, the witches give Perseus directions to Medusa country with a warning to watch out for falling stones. Travelers who've been petrified. Beware of everything they warn him, especially Medusa and her sister. Wait a minute. This can't be Medusa? This doll? Now, why would anybody want to badmouth a charming young lady like this? And that's very rare in Greece. So what's all this souvlaki everybody's been giving out about serpents in her hair? Why, she's the prettiest thing on the peninsula and demure, too. The least I can do is to pay my respects like any well-bred Greek boy. Anybody, repeat, anybody who looks on the face of Medusa, even if it's only a reflection, will be turned to stone, and there are no exceptions. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> 
These are the two sisters of Medusa. You can see a certain family resemblance. life left in the old head yet. Look at that. From serpents into a horse. Or is it an eagle? Or is it a dragon? Why, it's all three, but mostly horse. And his name is Pegasus. <laughs> A lick of the tongue, a brush of the wing. You can see Pegasus obviously likes the kid. <laughs> and off they go, a winged horse and his passenger, to become fixed stars in the heavens. Two separate constellations, Perseus, and Pegasus. And next time you see a meteor shower in the month of August, remember that they're called Perseids, after Perseus. Here we are back from hell and in Hellas again, which was what Greece was called in those days. And here is Wondermaker again, but this time in the role of young Phaeton, the cart driver. You'd never guess to look at him that he's the son of a very important deity, Helios, the sun god. It is Helios who drives the flaming chariot across the heavens every day, and without whose expert horsemanship, the earth would be plunged into perpetual night. It's scandalous when two asses try to make an ass of their master. Helios, guiding his chariot across the sky with a steady hold on the reins. long enough to make wings. Now, that asinine, they're not. They know that they're not up to flying.
the western sky towards sunset and rest until morning. They are now in the parking mode and will stay that way until the sun rises. But this sun has risen even earlier and he has a plan which he will put into action as soon as dawn breaks. Meet lovely Aurora and her cousin. They go through this routine every morning. Pyrrhois, Eus, and Phlegon. Ah, what beauties. Now, Helios has specifically forbidden his son Phaeton to go near the animals. But how convenient that Dad is a little late getting to work this morning. <laughs> Must have overslept. If ever there's a chance to make off with this rig, it's now. There's the ignition. It's a little slow warming up. Up and down stuff may amount to a little detail, but so what? We've got all day. Under the sea? Oh, yes, the road to hell again. Dad did mention the reflection of sunlight from the water. An amateur, a donkey driver, a crazy back there. We'll show the whippersnapper a thing or two. He's not going to control us.
there he goes. The same actor who you saw in the starring roles of Perseus, of Actaeon, and Orpheus, and Mercury. But now, he's a falling star. Not a bad way to go.